Tim. Thank you. Jay Haas, one over 72. Jay, talk about your round a little today. You know, it's funny how golf is. I played, uh, I thought, tee to green much better than I did yesterday, but didn't get the results. Uh, didn't putt quite as well, but my, uh, my miss hits I paid for, and that was uh, the difference. But I had, uh, you know, three or four chances for birds that did, I didn't get that I did yesterday. And I just miss hit a couple shots coming in, cost me. But overall, I was very pleased. Drove the ball really nicely. I drove it in the fairway bunker at 18 and made bogey, and I hit it in the first cut on number three, other than I hit all the fairways. And that was not the case yesterday. It was probably less than half. So uh, after two days, probably got what I deserved. But uh, pl pleased to be uh, in the red, for sure. And you know, doing, doing a lot of good things. I feel, uh, feel like I'm learning the golf course as we go along, learning where not to go. I hit, hit it a couple of those places today, but hopefully uh, by tomorrow and Sunday, I'll, I'll learn my lesson a little bit. We keep hearing how important getting it in the fairway is, but heading into the weekend, what else is going to be critical to, you know, whoever's going to hoist, hoist that yeah. trophy on Sunday? I think the greens have so much undulation in them that if you're on the wrong side of humps, uh, it really makes you, uh, put you on the defensive. And I had a couple of those today, a couple of miss hit shots that really, uh, uh, again, not knowing the course, I think really, really hurt me there. But I do think that the greens got a good bit faster today. Just the, you know, no rain, the sun drying them out a little bit. Uh, I thought they had at least a foot or two more of speed today. And uh, so that makes a difference when you're around the hole, you really can't run at them too much. And yesterday it seemed like you could a little, there was a little more moisture in the greens. I think that uh, as we go on, it'll, it'll get even more, that, more like that. I think the greens will be, uh, very difficult and you're seeing you know it's a it's a beautiful day a little bit of breeze kicking up but scores aren't unbelievable so um, I think the course is is showing out a little bit today can you talk a little bit about the fan support there's great crowds out here yeah it pretty it, pretty cool the, you know yesterday I could see not having a big crowd but today they're starting to come and, and this is a good sign that if you see it like this on Fridays that uh, you, you know the weekend's going to be pretty special and looks like the temperatures mid 80s and uh, so that uh, it's a pretty easy course to see a lot of stuff too, a lot of stuff going on right around the clubhouse. So you don't have to walk a long way. And uh, I think uh, I think we'll see some big crowds on on the weekend. We're gonna go here to the left, Joe. Um, Jay, I, correct me if I'm wrong. It's 17 appearances here, 17 made cuts. What? What is the secret? Uh, you know, whether you are young or old, you're still making cuts. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just hate missing cuts, I guess. Uh, but for some reason or another, I've played well in senior opens. And somebody said to me on, uh, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday that I'd never missed a cut, and I wished I hadn't heard that because <laughs> that was kind of all I was thinking about. You know, I, I don't know what it is. I, I drive the ball pretty well, or have have driven it well the last few years, and I think that's very important. You know, the length of the course is still a U.S. Open, so there's plenty. I've hit plenty of hybrid clubs into greens, and that's, uh, that's not to my benefit. But at the same time, I think pars are good scores. I always feel like a par. I didn't give anything away, you know, when I make a par on a hole. So I have a good attitude when I come to an open. You said yesterday you'd rather play than practice. Uh, is your have you cut your practice time, or are you still practicing as much as you used no, to? No, I, I, yeah, I don't practice hardly at all. I can't. I just... Uh, you know, I, I think all of us have aches and pains, and I just feel like uh, I don't get a lot out of practicing. It probably hurts me worse the next day when I get out of bed. And, uh, and I'm fine, but I just, you know, my back has been an issue for, for a long time. And uh, again, like most everybody out here, but I just feel like I uh, more quality rather than quantity. And I'd love to go out and bang a couple bu buckets of balls, but, uh, you know, by the end of it, I'll be, I'll feel pretty good. And then by you know, four o'clock this afternoon, I won't be able to get out of bed. We're gonna go to the mic on your right. Jay, with all that in mind, what are your career goals at this stage now? Uh, you know, keep my card, I guess. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, uh, I think for the longest time, I felt like I wanted to improve. That was my goal for the year. It, you know, back in my 20s and 30s, I wanted to get better. 
And, uh, you know, obviously that curve is going the wrong way, but I still think I can learn something. I played a practice round nine holes with Ernie on Tuesday afternoon, and, you know, it's watching him hit bunker shots and just watching his, how, how he approaches things. And, you know, I'm never going to hit it like Ernie, never did hit it like Ernie. So all I can do is learn uh, is certain shots around the greens that don't take a lot of strength and things like that. So uh, I think my goal each year is to get better in my mind and to learn how to, how to hit certain shots and to, to be patient. Uh, I think I'm much more patient than I ever used to be, you know, when I was younger. But uh, my goal is to, uh, to not play past when I should have quit. <laughs> I don't know when that's going to be, but I'll probably wake up and go, well, I should have quit three months ago. But uh, I still feel like I'm not embarrassing myself. And, you know, weeks like this, it's pretty cool. Just to follow that up, what do you think you have that gets you in contention at events like this that maybe some other guys just don't? Well, again, I, if I can drive the ball like I did today, that's a definite plus. And I'm not, I'm certainly not one of the longest hitters, but I'm not so short that I'm taking the brunt of it. So uh, I just, you know, if, if guys are driving this rough, but they're longer, I'd rather be 15, 20 yards shorter in the fairway at, at a place like this. A lot of places that's not the case, but here you've got not only is the rough pretty long, but it's very dense, very thick, and so I can't muscle through there. And if I'm in the rough, I didn't roll out, so now I'm another 10 or 15 yards even farther uh, than I want to be. So it's, uh, uh, you know, again, if I can put it in the fairway, then I have, uh, in my mind, somewhat of an advantage. Thank you. Here yeah, on your you've, left. Been, you've been around a little bit, and does it still amaze you when you look, you get a guy, LeBritz, 50 years old, he's been dying to get out here, um, a lot of passion. You've seen this for years. Does it still amaze you how much people embrace competitive golf? I think if you've played golf most of your life, you know, you, you look at a tournament like this and, and certain people that qualify, whether it be the first time or the 10th time, uh, whatever it is, it's pretty special. You know, I know when I played in the U.S. Open, I always felt like I really accomplished something, you know, whether it be through qualifying or being in the top 30 or the top 50, and however I got in. So uh, for, for people to, you know, have that bag tag that says U.S. Senior Open on it, it's pretty special. And I think most of the guys feel like, uh, you know, they've made it to the show, as they say. You know, you go in the locker room, and there's your locker with your name on it. And so that doesn't ever get old. Great. Well, Jay, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you, Thanks very much.